for the development of the Gambia. They were introduced to the village by Alasanja, a native. The Kombano settlement recently witnessed the laying of a foundation stone for a lower basic school. The Yensin family, also from the Netherlands, and through the Hands Together Foundation, is the emblem behind the new development. It's very uh, uh, amazing to come here and see that all the people, and all the people are uh, very happy, and uh, I think it's uh, for the good future. Justifying the rationale behind the financing of the project, Yensin emphasized, the best of all gifts is the gift of opportunity that avails an individual the ability to be self-reliant. He maintained that there could have been no other financial burden worth enduring than helping to educate the cream of the society, something he describes the shortest way to sustainable development. The closest school to Latria is about three kilometers. As such, the completion of this project will not only be a welcome news to the parents, but consequently mark the end of the trouble endured by these little ones who still trek to Yuna to attend their lessons under the scorching sun, the risk of snake bites and other hazards on their way. The peoples who initiate this contribute in one way or the other in supporting the government's efforts toward education. Education in the Gambia nowadays, the policy is saying a child should not walk more than three kilometers from his home to school. And so being the case, this Tony Johnson and his team come at the right time to erect a lower basic school to ease the movement or traveling of children from this community to a far place. The Alcala of the village and Alasanja were among the various speakers who took turns in hailing the Yensin family and the Hands Together Foundation for what they say bring relentless joy to the entire village and the surrounding communities. We never think of having a nursery before. Now we have it. We never think of a health post. Now we are challenging the health centers. I see people coming from the health centers also coming here simply because of the treatment. And now we are having foundation stone for a primary school, lower basic school. And this cannot be done without the collective effort of Hank and Hubbard and Trace and Shana and all the other board members in Holland. It is not easy to get money in Europe. As we all know, there is a big problem in this world, especially in Europe. To get money is all over a problem. But with their hearts and their mind, with the love they have for the people of Latria, until Hank have to put a tattoo in his hand to show the people that he loves the Gambia, which will never be erased. And I think they are part of the people of Latria. The Ensign family is also understood to have bankrolled the tertiary education of these young men and a lady, who have now earned themselves a place in the various sectors of the country's economy. The Hands Together Foundation Trust does not only stop in erecting the nursery school and this health post that operates 24 hours round the clock and seven days a week, registering over 200 patients annually, but soldiers the financial responsibility of paying the salaries of the staff. Louis Mendy, GRTS. Well, you can follow that story and other GRTS programs live on our website. That is at www.grts.gm. There you can also monitor GRTS Radio Live. Time now to take a short break. The news continues in just a moment. RTS Digital FM on 98.6 and 102.6, the best FM station in town where you can capture hundreds and thousands of potential customers with a wider coverage around the country. Advertise today and get your targeted customers. For more information, call 9933263, 9957254, 9957254. Or 4497331 and 9906445. GRTS Digital FM. Welcome back to GRTS News to News outside the Gambia now. NATO and the US are expressing regret, but right now Pakistan appears to be in no mood for condolences after what happened near the Afghan border Saturday. Pakistan officials blame NATO helicopters for an airstrike that killed 24 soldiers. Funerals for the fallen troops were held Sunday in Peshawar. 
The anger surrounding the incident shows no sign of abating. CNN's Riza Said has more from Islamabad. Out that certainly the U.S. and, uh, and NATO want to turn down the uh, temperature. They've issued a number of statements where they say they're remorseful, regretful. But if you look at these statements carefully, they have yet to deliver a full apology. They have yet to say that Pakistan's account of what happened is exactly what happened. They say they're investigating and they're taking this matter seriously, but still no full apology, no corroboration of Pakistan's account. For their part, Pakistani officials are continuing their angry response, issuing scorching condemnations. Uh, the prime minister saying he wants this matter investigated. Uh, earlier today in Peshawar, funeral services for some of the 24 Pakistani soldiers killed yesterday in Moment Agency. Their flag-draped uh, bodies being marched in the venue. Obviously a very somber mood in that event. But elsewhere in Peshawar, Pakistan's army chief, General uh, Ashfaq Pervez Kayani, visiting some of the injured soldiers in the hospital. This was video released by the army, and it really indicates how important it is for the army to show the public here that they take this matter seriously. Also in Pakistan today, a number of protests, some of the demonstrations uh, against this attack by NATO, numbering in the thousands. They didn't get violent. They were mostly uh, peaceful, uh, but certainly an angry response here in Pakistan to this uh, deadly NATO attack yesterday, Jonathan. The Arab League has announced that it would slap economic sanctions on Syria. This after the Syrian government shrugged off a deadline to allow Arab observers into the country. Mira Maghtabi looks at the implications of the unprecedented decision of the Arab League towards another member of this uh, league. Uh, when 19 countries voted for economic sanctions, Iraq abstained and Lebanon rejected the vote. And these sanctions include the following. First, stop dealing with, the Syria, with Syria's central bank, a ban uh, on high-profile Syrian officials from visiting Arab nations, and uh, freezing the assets of the Syrian government. Now, we were expecting also a ban on flights into and out of Syria, but this has not been approved yet. And the reason for that, according to the Qatari Prime Minister, is that the Arab League doesn't want to take any steps that will harm the Syrian people and not the Syrian regime, but they are studying the uh, project of banning the flights in and out of Syria. It's quite a significant uh, uh, that's by the Arab League, and definitely it will tighten the grip on the Assad regime. Rima Maktabi live in Paris. Thanks very much. <laughs> Time now to take another break. We'll take a look at the sports in just a moment. <laughs> Back to GRT's news and to the sports now. Football has lost a legend. Welsh coach Gary Speed has died at the age of 42. Welsh, who had a distinguished career in football, played for some of the top teams in English football, including Leeds, Newcastle and Bolton. We have more on that story in this report. He spanned 22 seasons on the football field. He became the player manager of Sheffield United and then last December was given the job as boss of Wales. Now, although Wales didn't quite qualify for the uh, 2012 European finals, they had won their last three internationals, John. Wales were a side on the up. He was only 42, leaves behind a wife and children. And amazingly, he was on a show called Football Focus yesterday. I watched it. He was alongside Gary McAllister, very upbeat. The host of the show said afterwards things looked absolutely fine. Uh, but as you say, at 7.08 this morning, Sunday morning, he was found dead at his home. Uh, please have confirmed that, and his family have confirmed also that it was Gary Speed, a, a legend. Everyone talked so well about him, very eloquent, intelligent, and a magnificent footballer. Hey, those of us who, who don't know him, don't know the family, so mystified by all of this, but uh, mystifying as well, you don't associate sport with suicide, especially not for sporting figures who are really in the prime of their career. I mean, that's absolutely true, isn't it? They've done uh, wide research on this, and one in five people can be affected by depression. It's a, a huge number, and of course, athletes are as well, but they have this self-confident exterior, nothing